2020 still isn't over and the continuous screw-ups of the Conservative Party are a constant reminder of it. But in my usual form of looking at things from different angles and finding silver linings, I actually see one now amidst the disastrous and wildly unpopular Lockdown 2.0 that the supposedly small government Conservatives have thrust us into. To do that, let's look at what the Conservatives like to describe themselves as. They'll tell you that they are for economic freedom and growth with fiscal responsibility, individual liberty, reason, stability, and ultimately, not being the Labour Party. But as we go into another lockdown decided on by what even they now admit was horrendously bad data, and after adding a disgusting amount to the national debt the first time around, even after the first several month lockdown we're back to square one, proving that they are nowhere near as effective as they thought. Well, huge swaths of the British public have woken up to this, and the backlash is real. This is the first time in my life that I'm seeing the people of this country stand up for individual rights en masse, and it's enough to make a grown man cry. This is another nail in the coffin of bipartisan neo-neoliberalism, which is what Western democracies have been for a very long time at this point. If you voted for the Conservatives in the last general election, you have to ask yourself what at all would have been different if Labour had got in. The only reason the Tories won that time was people trying not to have Brexit overruled. But it took three and a half years for them to get us out of the EU, and even after that we're hardly any closer to understanding what the hell is actually going on. The fact is simply that we were elated when we thought Boris was going to bring some sort of classical liberalism back into the party, but all we've seen him do is walk the line of the status quo so far that our two main parties are Labour and Diet Labour. Their budgets and economic policy are hardly distinguishable. Their Covid policies are almost identical, and that should be the most worrying to you, that our country's right wing are just as willing to destroy our economy as the left. At least when the left does it, they have the excuse of it being unintentional, but you can't get more deliberate than this. The so-called party of trade and business has irreversibly killed small to medium enterprises and the high street and brought the national debt to over 100% of GDP. That's enough to make Corbyn blush. We're not even sure if his lordship is even going to let us see our families at Christmas. If you take his word alone that the lockdown will only be four weeks, then I have no polite way of telling you that you are an idiot. Remember that three-week-long lockdown we had earlier this year? No, I don't either, because it was promised to be three weeks and turned into three months, with no normality in sight as we eased out of it, and now we're being thrown straight back in. And in what I can only describe as a miracle, this has snapped thousands of Brits out of the status quo so hard that I'm now regularly seeing people on social media say that if the cost of having the NHS is that we have to protect it rather than it protects us, then it's not even worth having. This is huge. Socialised healthcare is the most dogmatic cult we have in this country, and witnessing even the smallest vocal criticism of its existence is a feat so monumental I truly cannot describe it to you if you aren't from the UK. By doing this, people are risking being completely socially ostracised, losing their jobs, and this in a country where people are arrested for tweets. This is seriously sticking your neck out. Bipartisan worship of progressive institutions is crumbling around the feet of the Conservative Party, as the right-wing core of this country is showing the first signs of shifting away from neoliberalism to a bold libertarianism. If this is what people are willing to do, it makes a small part of me hope they continue the lockdowns over Christmas, because that would be enough to start a real rebellion and total political upheaval if the exponential rate of political disenfranchisement we currently have amongst the people continues compounding upwards. And just to chime in here for the science worshippers that have BTECs in travel and tourism and work in Iceland, but think they're epidemiologists because Twitter checkmarks told them how to think, before you screech, listen to the science, why don't you take a page out of your own book and listen to the epidemiologists from Oxford, Harvard and Stanford who wrote the Great Barrington Declaration, which tens of thousands of other scientists and doctors have signed, and learn for yourself 
that herd immunity is the only way we're getting out of this, and your precious lockdowns only extend present suffering while increasing future suffering and jeopardising liberty indefinitely. The message of focused protection that you'll find within the Great Barrington Declaration is getting out into the public, and a lot of people are listening. The impact on public approval that this will have is without a doubt going to cost the Conservatives the next election, and maybe a PM position for a long time, and I'm fucking glad. If the Tories want the votes of people who care even one iota for freedom and fiscal responsibility, they have a decade's worth of hard work to put in after this shit show. Jacob Rees-Mogg, who at the time of Theresa May, everyone came to see as the mascot for the Tory rebel backbenchers led by Boris, who proclaimed themselves to be classical liberals in the way of the Whigs, but he came out to defend Johnson's decision and in one speech has completely killed his credibility among his fan base who previously saw him as such. I do not think there has been a more freedom-loving Prime Minister of think this nation. Dude. In decades, <laughs> if not in over a century, <laughs> no, 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 the most no. freedom-loving <laughs> Prime Minister we could think of having <laughs> has come to this very difficult decision. And again, the momentum has come to a screeching halt. His optics literally could not have been worse, and any people who were hanging on to the Conservative Party in the hopes that they could be turned around will by now have completely jumped ship. Now the Tories are going to suffer drastically, and they deserve every minute of it. Libertarians are laughed at by the establishment, but this is going to very quickly change. Trump's policies of gun control and massive debt spending alienated libertarians as the MAGA cult laughed on, until libertarian votes in swing states cost him the election. Now the Republicans realise, if they want to be seen as libertarian friendly, they have to fucking earn it. The Conservatives have this same harsh lesson coming up. The only possible way they could save face is ousting Boris in a vote of no confidence, but that's most likely not possible. The rot in the party is perfectly illustrated by the massive disappointment that he personifies. The whole party has its head in the sand and is going to keep walking down this path of political suicide until it's too late to come back. So we as the British people are going to have to suffer under Labour leadership for a while. But when the right comes back, it will come back libertarian and pay off massively. Voters will not forget and the Tories will not change. Their time is done and now it's on to greener pastures after a very bumpy red road. But Labour's policies are always so unbelievably disastrous that when the right comes back, either as a completely renovated Tory party or a new Whig revivalist party, Labour will inevitably discredit themselves as much, if not more, than the Tories currently have, providing this emerging libertarian force a slingshot to the top. This coming decade is going to be an incredibly interesting one. Just enjoy the absurdity as it comes and don't let it depress you. Remember that authoritarianism always crumbles, and that there is a light at the end of this tunnel, and that light is fuelled by the neoliberal Tories committing suicide now, and the quasi-socialist Labour Party doing the same thing shortly after as it commits its own catastrophic blunders. Out of the ashes, something bold has to rise, and I predict that to be a new William Gladstone, dedicated to surplus budgets, free trade and free speech, economic stability, the legalisation of self-defence, and abolition of our failed social institutions in favour of market ones. If you only look at the present, you'll be excruciatingly depressed at where we are right now, but if you look into the horizon, you might catch a glimpse of what I see and understand my excitement. Take it easy.